34, and I'll call the meeting to order. Is that all I need to do? That's yeah. all I need Thank to you. do. And then the first order of business is 23 Forest Ave um, septic system. And we have with us um, Jim Garfield. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Um, yeah, so my name is James Garfield. I'm an engineer at Morse Engineering, uh, here representing the applicant for the septic system repair at 23 Forest Avenue. Um, I don't know, Pam, do you have the plan? Oh, there we go. Yep. So, you can all see this? Okay, good. Yep. Um, to familiarize yourself with the plan here, our property lines are the bold outlines. Um, the existing five bedroom single family home is kind of centered on the lot and then four staffs actually down at the bottom of the page. Um, so the existing site has a failing Title V septic system in the front yard. And what we're proposing is a new 1500 gallon septic tank, which will also be located in the front yard, but will be directed um, to the rear of the lot. It'll be a gravity fed system to a, a chamber bed uh, infiltrator, ARC 36 leaching field. And um, the two local upgrades that we're asking for are the use of a sieve analysis, as well as a reduction from four feet to three feet from the bottom of the leaching field to the groundwater table. Um, the sieve analysis, I imagine, I, I wasn't actually out on site for the soil testing, but I imagine it was just that the, the soil was a bit saturated, um, so they weren't able to actually do the perk test. And as far as the other local upgrade goes, um, we're asking for that one foot reduction to kind of lessen the mound in the back of the yard um, to help with the, you know, the grading and drainage pattern that'll be created. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys for any questions. When you, when, I'm sorry, Michael. I just want to add. So this system was not near any wetlands. It was not in a nitrogen sensitive zone. So it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Can I just ask? So when you say to go from, you want to reduce from four foot. Oh, oh, I see. Got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. I don't see any issues. Um, and this is a town, they're on town water and everything like that, right? So they don't have a, so the groundwater has no bearing on their drinking water? Uh, nope, no, no well on site. Yeah, looks, I, I haven't, can you, um, Pam, can you scroll over to the site map again, please? Sure. Right, let me reduce it a little bit to fit it on there. Oh, nice. Got it. And the, so the existing system was in the on the bottom of the uh, the p bottom of the page there. Yeah, but due to um, due to high groundwater, the front yard's a lot higher elevation than the rear. So due to high groundwater, if you were to dig there to put a new leaching field in, you could do it theoretically, but you'd have a big mound in the front yard. So mm. it makes a lot more sense to put it downhill. And beyond that, too, if you put it in the front yard, you most likely need a pump system with this system we can achieve gravity fed. Got it. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Lynn? No. All I right. don't. It looks good. Okay, so Damn then it. here yeah. are what you guys will vote on the local upgrade approval requests. So I can make this a little bit bigger, make it a little easier to read. Can you guys oh, see I, it okay? I got I have great vision. I can I'm, see happy, it. I'm happy to make this <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to make this. Do we need to have two separate motions on this or just one? Um, it might be safer just to do it two. Okay. Um, then I will move for the first local upgrade to be approved 310 CMR 15405H to allow reduction from four foot to three foot between groundwater and the bottom of the SAS. A second? I second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the one, second. Second motion. one, I'll, I'll move the, to approve the local upgrade 310 CMR 15405I to allow a SIB analysis to be performed. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
So moved. Two to nothing. Done. Okay. <laughs> Done. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Thanks. All right. Now let's see if I can figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Stop share. That's the button. Okay. There we go. All right. Where's the agenda? So that was easy enough. Um, and then the second thing we were going to talk about tonight was just um, whether the board would um, make the village and the village green, you know, in front of the town hall uh, into like a mandatory mask zone. And that came up because it was pretty obviously all through the summer months in early fall when the weather was really nice, there were people just hanging out leisurely on the, the common, you know, having picnics and, um, you know, playing t football. And it really kind of came from the carriage house initially because, you know, we had problems with COVID scares there. They had to be shut down. They're working really, really hard to keep it safe there. And they would let the little kids and their parents out, release them, and they'd go right across to the town common and then now they're congregating in a big group and all over each other and they were like what do we what do we kill ourselves here for you know and people aren't wearing masks or social distancing but this week since we've you know we've cut we've waited a few weeks for this meeting governor baker came out with this new mandatory face mask order order number 55 that basically says everybody has to wear a mask all the time now whether you're outside or inside in a public space so Honestly, this whole thing is kind of a moot point now at this point. Yeah. And I talked um, to I talked to Christina a little bit about it today, and he's like, well, it still wouldn't hurt, but I, I leave it to I you. Take it over. Just reinforce it, maybe? Right? Um. Can I just ask a question of order, a point of order here, though? It's on the agenda for 7.30. Do we have to wait to talk about this? I don't think so. I don't think it was an official public hearing. Like we didn't do a public hearing notice or anything like that. Well, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Lynn. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, I was actually looking for the agenda before. So that was not till 730. Yeah. It was just kind we, of a mistake. That's we just I mean. had the or we had yeah. just had the easiest <laughs> septic discussion ever. And then <laughs> we budgeted for an hour. Anyway. So my question I guess is when uh, well, I mean, the, the, go the governor's order, usually the, the state order would supersede anything we did anyway, right? Yeah, I, I think. think so. Yeah, because that kind of happened before. Um, initially, I think the uh, first, he's had like three mask orders now. And I think the first one didn't come out until the our local class of Board of Health created one. And then when the governor came up with one, I think ours was technically superseded. But I have to say, if you go around town, there's still a lot of places that have the local Cohasset one up and they like it. They like to be able to point to it and go, oh, look at it. it's Cohasset. Yeah, I gotta do this. Yeah. Um, and so the, I guess what I'm getting at is it's sort of like, well, I mean, is it enough for us to just have a resolution saying that we um, endorse the governor? I mean, do we, like we, if we came up with a policy, right, then that would also imply that we need to be a penalty, right, for enforcement and all this other stuff. And I don't think yeah. we want to get into that. Right. And there is one with the, the governor's one. It, it comes with it automatically. It's a $500 fine, technically. But everybody says, even locally here and by the state, like, you're not really first time going to go out and penalize anybody 500 bucks. That's kind of like a last resort. It's kind of just a, you know, warning. So the man, the man the mandate is from the governor is anywhere in public in town. I'm just trying to right, because it, regardless of social distancing, I'm just trying to. Exactly. That's think. what's changed. So it was always wear a mask if you can't maintain six feet of distance. So most people outside, you know, just walking their dogs or something, they were like, well, I can maintain six feet. I'm not wearing a mask. And, um, now this is saying if you're out walking on a sidewalk, regardless of six feet or not, you're supposed to be wearing a mask. That's kind of really what's changed. So like people going out for a jog or something. Technically, they're supposed well, to. That, yeah. I mean, that's what I was saying. I walk around Straits Pond and I don't see anybody. So 
So I don't see the point of wearing a mask. I know. You know, I walked I on do, the I beach thought, yesterday and I didn't wear one because it's kind of crazy. But um, right. But I, it's, I guess it's the idea. Um, that's why I think it's it 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 might be nice to point out in town and on the common, sort of where there are crowds of people. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think here, we definitely do something. Here's the thing. Either way, we can make up signs and say this is a mandatory mask zone. Mm -hmm. um, we can either say per request of Board of Health, or we could just put that this is a mandatory mask zone without anything like that up there. I don't know. Well, you don't know, have to say that board, the Kohasa Board Health, you can just say per governor's order, right? At mm -hmm. this point. You know? Yeah. And, and actually, yeah, the sign, it, like, so putting signs up around the common and maybe just around Main Street, like, the, you know, that's around the shops and stuff. It's a little village, yeah. Around the village, yeah. So what do you think about, what do you think about that, Lynn? Do you think that's enough sort of local? I think we can start there, right? Um, we can always do more if we feel that they're not paying attention to the signs. Are we getting, Pam, any, any indication from store owners or other people in town about people not being compliant in general, just out of curiosity, or people being pretty good? It's pretty rare, although I get to say I did get a call Monday from the woman that owns French Memories, and it's the second time she's called me because she's had people that just like to sit at her tables, like without, like, they order something, like, say, at 9, and by 11, they're still just sitting there, and they think, yeah. because I'm oh. in a restaurant, I don't need to wear a mask, and so um, I've gone up to help her. You know, to t explain to somebody like, um, you know, I know this is a restaurant, but, you know, it's really supposed to be unless you're eating or drinking, you need to put that mask back on again. So that's been the one, the one place that's had trouble lately. Other than that, it was really going back to the beginning. In the beginning, we had problems, but we haven't in a long time. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? I... I'm a I'm 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 I'd like to th basically just ride the coattails of the governor in my in my view and you know if it means if, if the way to show that support is by putting up signage then I think we should do that like in places where it isn't already like so I mean I don't think we need to issue new signs or anything like that to the to the shops or anything like that but I mean uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the best way to mark this around the town common and down in the village would be, but that's what that would be my suggestion. Do you think yeah, we so should? This summer I was down in Provincetown one day, like early September on a beautiful day. And they had on their commercial street, the main drag, we start to enter and there's all restaurants and galleries and stuff. There's a sign that says, this is a mandatory mask zone you're entering or something like that. And that's kind of like what gave me the idea when Chris was like, had this little meeting with a, emergency management team is like, what can we do? I'm so sick of seeing all these people out there with no masks. And that, I suggested that. And so anyway, that's how it all came to be. It's just that if we, if we say, that, if we say that, but if we just say something like the village and the town green, the town common are mandatory mask zones that basically by, by, by exclusion says that the rest of town is not, and that is not See true. what you mean, yeah. Or, or maybe we don't we don't use the we don't say that it's a mandatory mask zone. We say that there's a public uh, public mask requirement per word of the governor, and the signs happen to be in the village and, and in the town common. We're not going to go and like, you know, hang Couple the signs up down on inch. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, what do you think? Does that work for you, Lynn? That works for me. Yeah, I, I just don't want to put something else on the books that's just essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Unless there's, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's another way to do it, right? Which is for us to issue some kind of a statement as a board, just endorsing that, you know, something that we can put in the paper or whatever. But I mean, people are getting this stuff left and right, including through the town, you know, website and the announcements and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's necessary. You know, Michael, there, there is one way you could go because we have this um, new 
PR firm and um, they put out like press releases all the time. And you guys could do that like through these guys, you know, and just say, Quasi Board of Health. The headline would be Quasi Board of Health endorses, you know, Governor's Mask Order 55 or something. Um, I could have the guy just reach out to you too. Or you know what they do? They really, they honestly, they write the whole thing and they even quote you and then they give it to you and say, is this okay? And then you're like, okay. Is that something we have to vote? Is that something, <laughs> like we have something to vote I'd on? say? Sure. Do we, can, we, can we do that as, you know, basically as if they had interviewed like someone on the street, like a member of the board of selectmen. It's not actually like if we, if it says something like endorsed by the board of health or something like that, it sounds like something we have to vote on and have a, some kind of a agreed upon language that we'd, you know, get into the public record, right. As opposed to interviewing members of the board of health sort of in our capacity is, you know, do you know what I mean? There's sort of a difference yeah. between us taking a stand as a, as a body. I mean, although we did write a nice, we did get a piece in the paper when we were talking about um, the school. Um, I was going to say we endorsed the school later sleep, late, later start. Yeah. So we could do something like that. Um, yeah, I know. So procedurally, I'm not really quite sure either. Like if this is like you could take a vote or something, I guess you could just take a vote to endorse the governor's order number 55, I, something like that. I feel like that's what Robin did. So I could say, you know, I make a motion to endorse governor's mask order 55. And to raise public and to raise and to raise public awareness, awareness. by some variety of what did I say? public awareness by some variety of methods communications or something yeah. yeah do you want to do that let's do that yeah that'll be great <laughs> let's do something Wait, do i have to say that again so no i think we got um, it we got it okay. <laughs> i'll second that all in favor yeah all right awesome so actually pam if you want to send us or send the um the marketing people or whoever yeah, his name, his name is Matt Reed, and I just communicate with him via email. So I'll reach out to him tomorrow and just tell him what just happened now and give me your email addresses and he'll come up with something, you know, and, and he'll literally write the whole thing I love <laughs> with, it. with quotations from you too, I think. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, and then we'll just post it. So we have a COVID blog. I don't know who's, if anybody. Hopefully people are looking at it, um, but it'll probably just get posted there and you know, maybe go to the Mariner or something. That way, that way, if I decide to run for re-election, I can point to that as a, as a bit of action that we took. <laughs> Don't you feel like, Lynn, that, that, that there's so much of this in this public emergency that we're basically like, yeah, go, and we don't have to do anything? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I feel like it's surprising. Running right like, the show, it's amazing. And we just show up. We just show up and... Bang that gavel. And I don't think, yeah, I don't even think we showed up very much this summer. That's right. Well, I'm telling you, I do see those Coas Board of Health signs for masks when I walk into stores all the time. I saw one, yeah. I think Stop and Shop still got it. Like some of the sub shops still have it. I'll walk in there to do a food inspection. I'm like, oh, there's our sign. Yeah, the liquor store does too, I think. <laughs> yep, you're right. And they like that. They like to point to it. So, okay. Yeah, with the scapegoat. That's cool. <laughs> that's We're fine good. totally that's our job yeah all right well that takes care of that item on the agenda giddy up and um <laughs> so we've got on? the weekly um the weekly health reports and um you know amy's going to put those all in the meeting minutes i don't have too much going on covid related early this week mary i'll let, let her take over because she's the really the active one right now with the, the cases and stuff yeah, so um, can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so right now, um, I'm sure you're aware of the, the color-coded um, report that comes out every week, right? And um, based on our numbers, we're either gray, green, yellow, or red. We had been gray for a long time, and then we zoomed right up to yellow, and then we went to red. And that was because of a family of four and um, just the way it, it worked out. This week, it looks like we're going to go back to green because we've had a pretty quiet week last week. However, 
that said, what's brewing on the side is um, Sunrise. Sunrise had a sick work of staff member show up, work, go and get tested and she was confirmed. So she had worked during her infectious period. <clears throat> Subsequently, uh, two more staff have tested positive and eight residents. So out of curiosity, Mary, was she symptomatic when she was working? Um, apparently she worked a double and at the end of the double, she was really tired. So she went home, got up the next day, apparently still felt tired, but attributed it to the double worked. Mm. But by the end of that shift was not feeling well. So when you look at infectious period, you go by symptom onset two days prior to that. So she totally worked during her infectious period. So, yeah, But it wasn't like she was coughing and feverish and went to work no, knowing that she no. had, no, I get it. Okay. No, not really. That's too, so that's, anyway, that's rough. it's really rough because five of the cases are on the third floor, which is the memory impaired floor. Mm. So people have some pretty advanced dementia, Alzheimer's, they need, to, you know, they need assistance with all of their ADLs. Some of them even need to be fed. So it's almost impossible to isolate them. It's hard to put them in a room and tell them they have to stay there. It's really tough. It's a tough situation. So as of right now, there are eight residents that are confirmed, three staff. Um, three of the residents are currently hospitalized, but it gets complicated because some of them are already enrolled in hospice care because you know, they're like a failure to thrive. They're not doing well. And that decision was made a couple of months ago. So it's just rough. It's a rough situation. Um, we have an epidemiologist from the state who's been actively involved. He's following it. Um, tomorrow, I have a meeting with this epidemiologist, the director at Sunrise, and then one of the infection control epis at the state level. We're going to have a meeting and talk about just to make sure they're doing everything they possibly can to contain this. Um, they're closed to visitors. All of the residents are quarantined in their rooms. They're using paper plates, plastic utensils. I mean, they're really, they're really trying, but right now it's, um, it's definitely an outbreak there. So, um, mm. so just so you know what's going on. So my point is next week, we'll probably go to red again. And the source of that will be from sunrise. So um, in terms of infections in the schools, we've only had one high school student and one middle school student. Um, and both of those kids are recovered. And we currently don't have any cases in the schools. So other than sunrise, we're actually doing pretty well. Hmm. But sunrise is definitely a concern. Um, and, you know, they've done so well from the beginning, they, they really have done a great job of keeping it at bay. But this just got away from them. So, um, so that's what I am kind of swamped with that a little bit. Um, I do have Mary Whitley, who's another nurse who backs me up when I go on vacation. She's been picking up any other cases that come in. Um, she had a challenging case, uh, someone who had traveled and currently in Arkansas in a hotel. It's just like, it's unbelievable what some of these cases. So, um, so that's kind of what I've been a little bit busy with. And then just fielding questions from the schools, fielding questions from the daycare. There's all kinds of, um, every day it's something new. Every day is an adventure. Um, and then on top of that is flu. We've done two drive-through flu clinics. They were both at the Osgood. They were very successful. Um, I have to say it took a lot of a lot of coordinating. We had a we had emergency management. We had a hired a traffic company that will come in and you know manage the flow, make sure it's safe. Like they had the cones out. It was really really well done. Um, so I have one more flu clinic that'll be indoors at the Deer Hill, and we'll see how that goes. And the only reason I'm doing that is because that's on paper. That's our emergency dispensing site. So we're going to use it <clears throat> sort of as a drill. But I do think for COVID <clears throat> vaccine, we'll look at the drive through. You can just do so many more people. Yeah. <clears throat> people don't have to get out of their car. It's just, it's just much more efficient. 
The only thing you're up against is the weather. And of course, both of the drive-throughs rained. So um, yeah. as one of the nurses said, if you want to end the drought, have a drive-through clinic because it <laughs> rained. So, so anyway, so that's basically where I'm at. Um, yeah, it's it's been, it's really busy, but um, so that's all I have to report, I think. Mary, that's great. Um, those clinics are for just general public, right? Or is it for specific yeah. populations? No, they're general public. That's great. Um, and, and they're all by appointment. So um, the first clinic, you know, I did, I had three nurses. So every 10 minutes I had people and we found out we could do it every five, even faster than that. So the second one, I bumped it up. Um, so it worked well. We learned a ton, you know, things like I would have a nurse on each side of the car because a lot of cars had two, some had four people. You know, you could just crank them through there so fast. Um, so yeah. anyway, and then the one at Deer Hill, <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. I have a, so just, you mentioned that, uh, you know, eventually we'll have a COVID vaccine. What kind of, do does the town have to make plans? Is the state directing uh, towns to make plans for this in terms of, because I know that the, at least a couple of the vaccine candidates require really super cold chain Right. It's not just you can't just put it in the fridge. It's going to be like a super cool, like minus 80 or something. See, do, are we being prodded for that kind of prep at this point? Um, we're not. We haven't gotten a whole lot of um, guidance around that. Um, I did buy a new small. I bought a new refrigerator um, because my old one, there was a problem with the compressor. So I have a new uh uh, refrigerator for vaccine. And I also bought a small freezer, but I don't even know if that can go to those extreme temperatures. So usually right it's now, not, right? You usually have to buy yeah. a special, I mean, a special, um, a special one. And I mean, you know, the companies are preparing these things in special packaging so that, you know, you get it, it can stay at minus 80 for, you know, dry ice temperatures for a week or something like that. But I'm just wondering, you know, as you think about when we start doing sort of mass administration, they're going to, it's going to fall to towns to do it, I would think. And so I'm surprised that, I, that the state hasn't started pushing guidelines down at all in terms well, of how I to think, prep for that. Yeah, I think what's happened is the state had, had to submit a plan to the CDC for approval. Yep. Yep. Right. So I think right now the state is waiting for approval on their plan and then they'll turn around and give us some guidance. I have heard things like um, like the CVS is, would like to be the distributor um, nationally, so that could be interesting. Um, I, I you know I don't know how it's going to go, but um, I have yeah started to stockpile as much as I can, like you know um, syringes because uh, they're going to be in short supply. You know the other thing I think that'll happen when they do come up with the vaccine it'll go to priority groups first, right? So it'll go, they're saying first responders and then elderly. Um, but it'll also be distributed according to your numbers. So we've done pretty well with our numbers. We're not gonna get a lot of vaccine. So um, I, I think, you know, there's a lot to be learned yet, but we'll see. Yeah. Interesting. When yeah. you talk about when you talk about um, stockpiling, it just reminds me about how you mentioned this in like January, February, and I was like, "Yeah, gloves and sanitizer, thermometers, yeah. come on, really?" Yes, she's okay. overreacting. Yeah, I you know I'll, I admitted I was wrong the first time. I'll say it over and over again. I mean, good lord, you called it. Yeah, so. yeah, I never never thought it would be to this. Um, to this extreme, you know, we're, we're what, eight months, nine months into this, like all, you know, the whole time I've been in public health for 12 years and they always talk, you know, you plan for like the worst case scenario, but that all of that planning was like an event that would take, you know, two or three months. This is like unbelievable, you know? Um, so. Well, well done. You and Pam are doing heroes work right now so i'm sorry that i'm on the on the behalf of the general public i apologize for our <laughs> increasing numbers 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just, it's just so it's so discouraging just to see it rebounding the way it is worldwide. Oh. It's so discouraging, and it's so so discouraging to be on the local level, killing yourself, and yeah. at the top we're getting no direction. You know, it's just I mean he's making a mockery of us. I don't want to get political. This is a public meeting, but um, it's just it's re it's really rough. You know, morale. Yeah. So. Well, there was a glimmer of hope today, though. Biden took Wisconsin and Michigan, so yeah, he's not over yeah. yet. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking. I happen to just have it's in the back right now. He only needs four more delegates to win. Oh God! Which it could be Nevada, um, right? Or did he already? They give him Nevada already? No, not yet. Anyway, sorry. Okay, <laughs> That'd be great. Mary, yeah. can I ask you a question? Can you clarify again the probable cases versus the yeah. confirmed cases? Yeah, yeah. So the probable cases, those are anyone who's had antigen testing. The state oh, doesn't okay. the state doesn't consider a positive antigen as a confirmed case. Um, the confirmed cases are people who have gone and had a PCR test. Yeah. So okay. the recommendation is if you get an antigen, please follow it up with a PCR. Yeah. Um, so that's what the probables are. And as you can okay. see, they've sort of um, stabilized because most places now are doing the PCR. Okay. I learned something um, just the other day, which, I mean, it makes sense in hindsight, but the PCR test, when you have somebody who's infected and they're positive PCR, and then they go through their infectious period, and then you, know, you test them a week later, they can still test positive. Just right. because of the residual, you know, RNA that's around and such and like before your body's completely cleared it, um, which is interesting because you know everyone talks about not maybe not professionals, but the but the general public often will say, oh yeah yeah they they tested positive but now they tested clean. It's like well that's not necessary. I mean it, that means they're not infected anymore, but they could also not be infected anymore five days before that too. These tests are not. You know, they're good for telling you when you're infected and when you need to stay away from everybody. They're not so good at telling you when you're not infected anymore. Yeah, and that opens a whole other, you know, issue of immunity. So right now, what the state says is don't retest up for up to 90 days because you're shedding the virus and most likely it'll come back positive. So they don't recommend that. They kind of say they consider you to have some short-term immunity. How good it is, we don't know. How long it lasts, but they kind of give you this ninety-day window. So, yeah, they're they're really confident in that ten-day isolation period. They feel like you're not infectious after ten days. Period. Good, you're good to go. Don't test. But that's right. why, you know, in some ways, you can get released faster if you actually get a positive test than if you're um, a close contact. You have to stick out that full fourteen days. You can't test your way out of that thing either. Right. Um, Everybody so thinks though that they can test out of quarantine. You know, they'll say, "Well, I got a negative test, but it doesn't get you out of quarantine." Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Great. All right. Amy, is there anything else on the agenda? I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry. And yeah, we need to set the next meeting date. Right, because we are going to have another um, septic system coming up. So we, we do have to have a December date. So let's, do you want to set that now? And then just the minutes. I don't know if you guys are oh, comfortable yeah. with approving the minutes or if you wanted to wait. I thought the minutes were great. I, mm -hmm. I, I did you hear from Robin? Okay. Did you hear from Robin about the minutes? I have not. No, I haven't heard from him, which was odd. So, because um, he usually, you know, has some remarks somewhat. Um, right. Do you want to table so, the approval of the minutes till next time? I feel like it was an important meeting to have his input. Yeah, that's true. Boy, I hope he's okay now that we're talking, because yeah. I've, I've tried to contact him through every venue possible and I haven't heard from him. Hmm. Hmm. I'll try again tomorrow. Um, All right. So I'm sorry. So are you going to table them? Or so, yeah. Let's table okay. the minutes. Okay. Um, so what? when in December? Should we do early December? 
Like, yeah, that makes first, sense. It's Tuesday, right? We like Tuesdays, the first or the eighth? No, I, to say, unfortunately, Tuesdays are bad for me because I, I have to do Slackman's oh. meetings a lot. So, oh, that's right. Uh, this is Wednesday, so Wednesdays would be good if you wouldn't mind. Wednesday oh, yeah. the ninth, maybe. The ninth. Uh, that would be good. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's, let's book it. Um, Six thirty again. Yep. Um, and do we know? Um, hang on, wait. Enter this. Oops. Um, are we gonna hear back? Have we heard anything back from the, the Coopers? No, so believe me, the neighbors keep questioning all the time too. So he has not reached out to conservation yet. Um, initially, he was all gung ho and, and wanted to get a hold of Jeff, the conservation agent, and um, he's just kind of disappeared. Now he's pr pursuing a building permit because he's trying to also renovate his house. And I had to reject it because I'm supposed to sign off in health. And I rejected it and said, well, I can't do that until he applies for. Um, a disposal system construction permit because he's going to move his tank from his um, septic in order to do that thing. So he owes us that. He owes conservation the notice of intent. I, I don't know what he's doing, but he hasn't he hasn't moved anything forward. So no, I haven't heard anything from him. That's surprising. I was actually it's surprised. I mean, I was he did make the allusion. He did allude to the fact that it was like, well, if we don't get this resolved now, we will just sell the house and move. Back. He's getting, if he's looking to get building permits, then that's not the case. Right. All right. Well, whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. So I, I don't know what his story is. Not our problem, I guess. Just curious. <laughs> right. All right. Anything else? Amy, I think that's it, right? Yes, that's it. That's as far as I know. Yeah. So I, you guys want to vote I to would adjourn? Like, I would love to move to adjourn. Oh. I second that. Okay, so I'll I guess we're done. Yes, awesome. So voted. Okay. So voted. Let it be thus. <laughs>